Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ahmed and in today's video, part 2 of our series, we will learn how to enhance the CFD mesh around an airfoil using completely free and open source software. So, if you are ready to take your simulation quality to the next level, let's get started. In the previous part, we generated the mesh using a multi-block approach with the block mesh utility in OpenFoam, applying a simple grading strategy to distribute the cells. In this part, we will move to edge grading, which provides more precise control over mesh density, especially near the airfoil region, where refinement is essential for accurate flow prediction. If you find this topic interesting, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more CFD tutorials and engineering content. And make sure to share it with your colleagues who share the same passion for simulation and open source tools. Alright, let's jump right in and lock the difference between sample grading and edge grading in open form. Understanding this step is key because it defines how we control cell size distribution along the edges of our blocks and that directly affect mesh quality near the airfoil. So let's start by understanding what simple grading means in open form. Simple grading is a quick way to define how the cell sizes grow or shrink along each direction x, y and z inside a block. For example, if we set the value to 1 in XYZ, it creates a new mesh in all direction where all cells have the same size. But if we use a value like 3, for example, in X direction, it means that the last cell along X will be 3 times larger than the first cell. We can also reverse the distribution by using a value less than 1. For example, a value of 0 0.3 makes the last cell about 0.3 times smaller than the first, which is useful when we want to find a finer cells near a specific boundary. As you can see here, symbol grading provides a fast way to stretch or compress cells, but it applies the same ratio along all edges in that direction. Okay, but how would we create such a cell distribution? It has different bias direction on the first and second edges in the x direction. Sample grading cannot handle this. And here comes the power of edge grading. It allows us to split each edge in one direction and control it separately, giving much better flexibility and refinement options. Now let's take a closer look on edge grading and how to use it in OpenFoam. Edge grading gives you individual control over every edge of the block. Instead of using just three values like in simple grading, here we define 12 numbers, each representing one edge of the hexahedral block. The format follows the block edge order used in open form, starting from the lower face and then the upper face. Each value defines the expansion ratio for that specific edge. It's now very easy to create such a cell distribution. We simply use edge grading instead of simple grading and we can set 0.3 for the x1 edge and 3 for the x2 edge. This produces a non-homogeneous mesh with different bias direction along the same axis. Something simple grading cannot achieve. This approach also helps to reduce skewness and improve mesh quality as we will see shortly in our airfoil CFD mesh example. We can also use edge grading to split a block edge into multiple parts, each with different bias direction. For example, in this case I have split the x1 and x2 edges into two parts, each taking 50% of the total edge lengths and 50% of the total cells, but with opposite bias direction. This technique is very useful to concentrate cells near the walls while keeping a smooth transition in the rest of the domain. A great way to enhance mesh quality around the airfoil surface. Now, let's go back to our CFD mesh around the airfoil. 
After understanding both symbol grading and edge grading, we are ready to apply these techniques to enhance and refine the mesh in the critical regions around the airfoil surface. This step will help us achieve better accuracy, smoother flow resolution, and improved overall simulation performance. Just to remind you, in part 1 of this tutorial, we used 4 blocks to generate the mesh around the airfoil. Now we will take full control of the cell distribution inside each block to enhance and refine the mesh around the airfoil surface. By adjusting the edge grading value in each block, we can focus the high dense cells exactly where they are needed. Close the airfoil while keeping a coarser mesh farther away to save computational time. Let's start with the first block, block number 0. In this block, the X1 and X4 edges correspond to the airfoil upper surface, while X2 and X3 represent the upper inlet curve. By controlling the cell distribution along these edges, we can refine the mesh near the airfoil surface and maintain a smooth transition toward the inlet region. For the X edges in this block, we used the edge grading to split X1 and X4 into two parts, each with reverse bias directions. This approach refines the mesh near both the leading edge and the trailing edge of the airfoil, where the flow gradient are strongest. For the X2 and X3 edges, we applied 0.3 grading value to help reducing cell skewness and maintain a more uniform transition towards the inlet boundary. And here is how to implement the X edges cell distribution directly in the block mesh deck file. And regarding the Y edges cell distribution, we used an edge grading function to split each Y edge into two parts. The first part represents about 5% of the total edge length, and the second part takes the remaining 95%. These configurations help to condense the cell near the upper and lower surfaces of the airfoil, improving our ability to capture the boundary layer and accurately resolve the near wall flow behavior. And here is how to implement the Y edge cell distribution directly in the block mesh deck file. Regarding the Z direction edges, we will use a normal distribution, so we will set the grading value to 1. Since we are running a 2D simulation, we only need one cell in Z direction with uniform spacing. And here is how to implement the Z edge cell distribution directly in the block mesh deck file. Block number 2 is similar to block 0, so we will apply same edge grading strategy. This ensures a consistent cell distribution and smooth mesh connectivity across the upper region of the airfoil. And here's how to implement it directly inside the block mesh deck file using the same edge definition and the grading values we applied before. For block number 1 and the block number 3, in the X direction we will use grading value of 100 for all X edges. This helps condense the cell near the trailing edge while keeping the far field region wider for better numerical stability. In the Y direction we must ensure that the common edges shared with block 0 and block 2 use the same grading strategy. This is important to avoid mesh connectivity errors when running the block mesh function. Finally, for the Z direction, we will keep it uniform with one cell since this is just a 2D simulation, as we mentioned before. And here is how to implement block 1 and block 3 in the block mesh deck file directly. Now that we have completed our block mesh deck setup, let's move on to generate the mesh itself. To do this, open your terminal inside the case directory and simply type block mesh. This command will read all the information we have defined inside the system block mesh deck file and create the mesh inside the constant poly mesh folder. Once the meshing process is finished, it's always a good practice to check the mesh quality. And you can do this by typing check mesh. This command analyzes the generated mesh and provides a detailed report on its quality. As you can see here, mesh OK, this means your mesh passes all the essential quality checks. Now we can use Paraview to visualize the final mesh generated by block mesh. As you can see, the mesh is well structured with smooth transition between the blocks. 
The cells are densely backed near the airfoil surface to capture the boundary layer accurately, while they are wider in the far field region to reduce the total cell count and save computational cost. If you found this tutorial useful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to get all our new tutorials. Also share this content with your friends who have the same interest in CFD and open source simulation tools. Thank you for watching.